Hey, hey, hey. So here we go again with a couple of more features to discover. Uh, so we've seen the wireframe mode, OpenGL, super fast. Then we have the shaded mode, also really fast. And we have the back face culling that can be disabled. That's what we call double-sided mode. Uh, gamma correction I'm going to leave out for now. And so we have a nice... Ooh, but look at that, that's new. So we have an environment reflection mapping and we have spherical maps here. There's a whole bunch of these here. Uh, we're going to need to explore that in a little bit more detail. I just want to show you some of the effects um, on that. So you can you can see here, whatever that map is, it's a spherical map. Uh, it's an image. I think it's 1K by 1K. We can probably load others in there. And we'll explore that a little bit deeper. But let's first do a few more things. Uh, we can change the light, we can change the intensity, we can change the zoom one way or another. Uh, let's switch to another object. We've seen the dragon before. Let's go see that one. So the dragon I have down here where Howler is installed. That would be program files Howler there. So in the geometry area where you have your trees. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a sphere map now uh, or a couple of sphere maps. But the test directory also has, still has the bunny. Let's see if that one has any materials. Uh, some reflections. Let's see if we change the map. Nope, that doesn't do much. So that one doesn't have, that one has a map on its surface, <clears throat> has a texture on the surface, but doesn't have the environments, the reflections for that yet. We will take a look at that in the different tutorials uh, as to how to do that. Let's get the dragon. I think that one has it. Yeah, that one you can see has a nice reflection, shows a nice reflection on the surface, uh, reflection of that uh, environment, that is. Um, so in addition to the lights that are hitting that surface too. Let's take one of those, like this one here. There you go. So that's a nice new feature to get a even better uh, appearance for this, uh, better impression of this uh, 3D model. Um, let's see one more. So the teapot also has, I have been told, yep, uh, by the way, if you want it loaded into the center, if you reset it, it might not be. Um, that depends on the settings you have here, load verbatim, centered, or placed on ground. So there's a couple of different ways that you can have it when you reset it, that might affect it. But also, especially if you reload it, so teapot, yeah. Didn't go the way I thought it would. Anyway, what we want to focus on is the environment reflection map here. We don't have it on the ground uh, squares there, but on the teapot, we can see now the reflection map. And that's just the beauty to add more to it. We still need to have some shadows. We can actually bake them in. That, that is one of the attributes where we probably have at some point some dynamic shadows or um, in, uh, what's it called? Ambient occlusion. Uh, let's see, one more model that has the metallicness, the metalness, or whatever it's called. So here is another, and that's our spacesuit. I think that one also has some reflection. Oh, we could do more. Uh, let's take a look if we load a different map here. Now, only a tiny little bit. Okay, so this is not the one I was looking for. Yeah, it does a little bit here, but it's uh, barely visible. So we need to find the, because the, the helmet certainly should have some reflection, but it's probably just not in the material description. Ah, yes, here, this one, the black ship, uh, black tip shark. Uh, that one you can see also has a bit of a reflection. It's not super strong, but yeah, you can see it here. Um, so that's another example. Uh, let's see if we can move in closer, because then as we rotate, as we turn it, we can see a bit of, yeah, a bit of the environment reflecting there. Um, let's just check one of the other environments with a bit green or blue at the bottom or the top. Yeah, definitely right there. Okay, so we can now have environment reflection mapping. Let's do just one more. I think I have an airplane, an F-16. All right, let's try one more. This one is going to be Ken Brilliant's Amopi Day Demon. That was a model he created long ago. 
in uh, in a mappy and I added a little detail on the material description. Let's see if we can find it here somewhere under my uh, where is it? Oh, this folder here, yeah. OBJ, good for demo, and then mappy demon by Ken Brilliant. There you go. I think this one has a little bit of a reflection too. Let's go enable one of those spherical maps. No, nope, I guess I didn't do it right, but uh, we do at least have the environment, I mean the the, the solid appearance there, which <laughs> can create some pretty funky stuff too. Um, we do want to find one more. Let, let me get that uh, F16. There it is. All right. So if we take that one with a different map, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of reflection happening here. Let's look at it from this side. Yeah, you can tell it's changing the lighting effect here. So there's a little bit of a reflection on that one. And uh, that's the metallic appearance. Uh, could be a veneer, could be glass. There's a variety of ways to make it so. Um, I thought we had uh, another one of those uh, space uh, space suits. Let's see, maybe it's the Z. Yeah, the Z2. Let's go try that one. Let's try the alternate. There you go. That one has pretty sure that one has some reflections so we can certainly first of all increase the light a little bit shine on it in different directions and then enable the environment light and definitely get that effect there so let's see if we in fact if we get rid of the lights altogether we should have just the environment acting on it there you go. And let's get some of these. Yeah, not much. This is very little bit of reflection, not a whole lot. You can see it here. There's a little bit of it there. So if we change the, the map, it does affect it, but it's not a hundred percent. This one is only a very slight amount of it. So there it is. Let's go bring it back. Maybe some reddish, maybe some bluish, like this. Uh, this one here should be a bit more on the yellow side. And so now, of course, that's the the lighting effect. But as we've seen, uh, we can we can apply. Oh, let's see one more. I think the Voyager has it too. So that one, of course, will be probably showing in the disk, the satellite issue. Back here, yeah, there in the back, you can see some reflection. Let's bring it in a little bit closer. Oh, it's already at the max. We need to actually move in. There. Yeah, you can see it reflecting right there. So if we change the environment map here, the spherical, that should have, there you go, that has a bearing on that, and you can see it right there. Okay, so uh, that's a first look at uh, that new feature. We will probably have a few more coming, but this is one now that we have released. Uh, Dan calls it 2024.2, uh, and uh, it is build number 70 for uh, the current enjoyment. And so if you are looking at doing some visualization of this sort, um, let us know what else you need. Uh, maybe you want that wireframe to also be rendered because right now when we do wireframe, it's in the interactive view, but the moment you let go, it's gonna do the shaded rendering. Obviously we still need to have some shadows and some, um, what's the other option there for, for some shading. Uh, ambient occlusion would be absolutely awesome, but it's uh, it's just stunning what we have here now. We can create these and we can 
collect them in a couple of um, a couple of uh, images in the brush. So, for example, let's say if I go to the shaded mode and I say I want to see it this way and make a brush from that, and then I want to see it this way and may add it to the brush and then and so on and I create add it to the brush and so, so you can you can create a whole bunch of images either with slight changes or or massive different angles there you go and let's give it one more add to the brush so now we have an animator brush let's okay that and you can see it right there there's your animated brush and there's a, a film strip containing all of them. Now, if you want, you can simply paint with that and it's going through each of these images from the sequence, or you can lay them out into an animation so you can then collect them separately, individually. So you basically create a, a placeholder animation. Don't need that many, it's probably less than 10. And, and then simply render out that animated brush across the entire sequence of the animation here. That's easiest to, that's something you can really easily do with the brush keyframer. Uh, brush keyframer shows you the current brush in the view here. And then all you have to do is cycle through that and render it out. Now, if there's more frames in the animation than frames in the, in the brush, it will simply cycle through that. And repeat. So go render that and that's it. And now you have a sequence of individual images and you get to choose which one you actually want to use. Alright, well thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more.